It's a space station when you've got a hand cannon. Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, Wild Hearts is now out for all of us to enjoy, and having been playing the hell out of it for the last couple of weeks, thanks to EA for giving us early access to the game, I've learned quite a lot and fallen a little bit in love with a few of the weapons. One of my top three in the game is undoubtedly the hand cannon. This is just unbelievably, just such an incredibly cool weapon. It plays very differently from everything else in the game, being one of the only two ranged weapons that are in the game, but also being extremely unique even compared to the bow. There aren't many actual inputs on the weapon itself, but the actual playstyle has a bit of complexity to it, and it requires you to be pretty on point with both positioning and timing to make the most of it. But when you do make the most of it, when you get those big moments, oh man does it feel absolutely incredible. This thing heavily rewards a deeper understanding of its use, and the actual gameplay loop of it feels insanely good once you get the hang of it. This is one of the weapons that you don't unlock until chapter 2 of the game, but once you get there, actually making it is quite easy. What I will say without spoiling the story much is that you actually get this weapon put in your hands for a story quest relatively early on, but it is an extremely bare bones version of the weapon. It is missing pretty much all of the mechanics and the coolest parts of it. So if you've done that quest and you think that the hand cannon is a bit lame as a result, don't lock your opinion down until you've tried the proper thing, at least in training mode, because trust me, this thing deserves some love. If you like being ranged and you like massive pops of damage on a regular basis, then this weapon might well be for you. Also, you get to hold a freaking cannon in your hands, and that's just totally awesome to be able to do. So without further ado today, we'll be diving into the basic moveset of the weapon, the ways that it interacts with the various basic curry that you have access to, and then we'll just go over the most ideal combos, some tips for proper in-hunt execution, and just the general playstyle that you'll want to aim for to get the most of the damage in the least amount of time. As well, at the end, we'll do a light spoiler section going over each of the various hand cannon specific skills that only affect this weapon and have the potential to heavily change up your playstyle, thus defining how the weapon will feel in both late game and post story content. Starting off then, the cannon is a pummel damage weapon by default, but there are some ways to change that later on in the game. This of course is important because different kimono have different weaknesses to the various physical damage types that are available to you. Before we dive into individual moves, we need to talk about the two gauges that fuel this weapon. First in the bottom left is the charge gauge. This starts off full. Think of this as your ammo count. When it is empty, you can only fire the gun once every couple of seconds. It's really just unideal. You don't want to be at this point ever. When it is full, you can fire as much as you want, and as you fire, it will deplete under you. Above that is the heat gauge. This starts empty. As you fire the gun, it will fill up. And if it hits max, your gun will fully overheat, which will dump your charge and make you unable to gain charge until it empties. That said, there are both ways to gain back charge extremely quickly and to dump your heat and doing so is how you access your absolute strongest attacks. With that said, your basic attack combo is actually done with the special attack button on this weapon. You can see in the controller section of the settings what buttons apply for you to the various terms that I'll be using here. The special attack button will just, well, fire your gun. If you hold it down, it will continually do so, both using up charge and building up heat. It's worth noting that while you are a ranged weapon, your range is actually relatively low. If you get too far away, your shots will start to hit for one damage apiece, which is nothing, obviously, so keep an eye on that to know how close you have to be to each kimono. If you press attack 1, you will create a circle under you called a key base. Like a wicked magic circle. While standing inside of a key base, you regenerate charge at an extremely quick rate, significantly faster even than you can spend it by firing your weapon non-stop. By default, you have five of these, which are shown as the icons beside your charge meter. You can place that number of them on the ground at any time. My weapon skill currently lets me have a sixth one, which is why you can see that there. This lets you set up a sort of spider web of recharge areas in a zone. This way you can fight the kimono and stay mobile, but you always have a place to recharge, which means you can keep firing your weapon even outside of the circle. Then you just need to step into one of these for even a brief moment and you'll get all of your charge back. If you press the attack two button, you'll take a stance that fires an arcing shot, which specifically will actually fire one of your key bases at range, also emptying your heat gauge entirely. If this hits a kimono, it will do a decent chunk of damage. And this is actually how you unlock your stronger attacks, specifically 
immediately. By firing the weapon normally, you'll be building up heat. Once the heat gauge reaches the red section of it, you'll see flames start to shoot out the back of your weapon. Red. If you use the attack 2 keybase mortar shot with the weapon in this state, and the shot directly makes contact with a kimono. Not the explosion, but the actual physical keybase shot itself, it will create a fortified keybase on the ground. As well, this is actually one of your strongest attacks. This fortified keybase looks just like the others, except it has a red aura. If you stand inside of the fortified keybase and press special attack and attack 2 at the same time, you will do what is called a celestial thread charge. This gives your weapon a glowing blue aura, and it means that you can do your strongest attack. It also removes the red from the keybase, making it just the normal one. If you press special attack and attack 2 while you have your gun in this blue glowing state, you'll take the fortified firing stance. You cannot move while you're in this stance and you only have one attack option while standing like this, called Fortified Shot. This will fire out a laser as long as you hold down the special attack button until you run out of your charge meter. Then at the end of your charge meter, it will unleash a massive explosion ball as the finisher of the attack. This is one of the highest damage attacks in the entire game, and it is, of course, extremely cool as well. One final input to note for this weapon is if you press special attack and attack one at any point, you will absorb your key bases back into the gun allowing you to reset the battlefield. So with that covered, what are your basic Karakuri interactions? With the box, you get to do a bit of an aerial shot. This is more damage than an average shot, but not by an insane amount, so this does have limited use overall compared to your stronger moves. With the spring, you get an incredible move that burst fires in front of you and builds up loads of heat. This is actually extremely useful, and I'll get into why in the more in-depth section after this. With the torch, you don't get a unique attack, but this does two things. It changes the damage of your shots to be fire damage, and on top of that, it also increases the rate at which you gain heat, giving you a flat amount of extra heat per shot taken while the gun is on fire. This changes the number of shots required to hit red heat from 17, which is the default, to 9 with the torch buff on, and given that your strongest attacks are based around hitting high heat, this is quite good. Then we have the glider. From the glider you can fire shots in the air, which is both funny and actually useful in various situations, as this is also the fastest way that you can move and shoot at the same time, on top of which your firing speed while in the glider is actually much faster than it is on the ground. Then finally, we have the Celestial Anchor. When you jump while tied to the Celestial Anchor and do a shot before you land, you will do a similar burst fire as you do with the spring. It builds less heat, but you can do it more often, so there are both benefits and negatives to this over the spring. With that covered, let's get into the meatier parts of the weapon, how you want to use it to maximize your damage, and any little tips that I've learned from a couple dozen hours playing it myself. Well, first up, this may not surprise you. If you want to do as much damage as possible, the best way to do that is to get to the laser attack as quickly as possible on repeat. The laser attack from start to finish does thousands of damage to most kimono, and doing that a few times will kill most of them even if you don't hit them with anything else the entire time. The general shots are great for just keeping some damage in, as any damage is damage, and they also build up your heat gauge so you'll be firing them anyways, but the fastest way to build your heat gauge is with the spring attack. Two spring attacks will put you into red heat, which means that you can fire a fortified key base. Worth noting again that fortified key base shots do more damage than regular key based shots, and again, are one of your strongest attacks, so again, high heat tends to equal high damage moves. As for the fortified key based shot, for this to work properly, again, it needs to make physical contact with the kimono. You can aim this from afar, but generally getting the aim right will take a bit of time to set up, and if your target is moving at all, it can be very hard to actually hit this. But because of the nature of the arcing shot, if you do this attack in melee range, hugging the kimono a foot away from it, it will just hit as it comes out of the cannon, giving you a guaranteed contact hit and spawning the fortified key base no problem. Watch me hit him right between the eyes. Once you have zooped up the energy from the fortified key base into your gun, you are ready for the laser attack, but there are two things to consider here. One, the brunt of the damage of this attack happens when you run out of charge, so generally avoid launching the attack off unless you know you can finish it. This means it is best done when the kimono is locked into an animation some distance away, or if you have it in a trap of some description. Two, the faster your charge drains, the less of the laser ticks you'll actually get before the explosion. There are two reasons that this matters. First, if you know you don't have a big timing window, this does let you get to the big blast at the end much faster. But other than that, the best way to use this attack, the most effective one, is by standing inside of a key base. Sadly, if you put multiple key bases on top of each other, the effect won't stack, but standing inside of one key base actively quickly refills your charge meter, and so if you fire the laser while inside of a key base, the attack will last much longer, giving you far more ticks of the laser before it ends with a big boom. This is the way to absolutely maximize the damage of the weapon. Fire shots are used spring attacks to build up heat, 
feet, fire a fortified keybase right in front of the kimono, wait until it's locked into an animation, or create a period of downtime yourself with Kara Curry, and then fire the laser into a weak spot. There are quite a few steps along the way, but once you get the hang of the weapon and get an understanding of it, it is actually incredibly simple to pull off. A very repeatable and satisfying gameplay loop that rewards understanding of attacks, positioning, and timing above all else. Aside from that, obviously the best way to open the fight is with a laser. You may be saying, how can you do that? Well, there's two reasons. First off, you can build up the heat gauge by firing, obviously, and you don't need to hit anything, so you can fire at absolutely nothing and build up your heat gauge for free. On top of that, you can actually hit the fortified key base shot on a small kimono. When you do this, it will create the fortified key base on the floor, then you can zoop up the energy into the weapon. Once your weapon is in the blue glowing state, it actually stays this way for pretty much a couple of minutes, meaning that you have all the time in the world to set up as much as you want until then, letting you actually start the fight with a trap and a laser before the kimono even realizes that you're there. This is the strongest way to open with this weapon, and it is extremely strong even not considering the weapon itself. And with that covered, I'm now going to dive into the hand cannon's unique skills that you'll have access to later in the game. These are the things that can have a pretty substantial effect on the playstyle of the weapon, so look away now if you want to stay blind on said weapon skills until you reach that point in the game yourself. Otherwise, we'll begin with Volley. This skill simply increases the speed of your base shot firing as long as you have charge. This one specifically increases it by 10% as an inherited skill, but I have seen inherent versions of the skill that go as high as 30%, which is nuts. Then we have speed build. This increases the deployment and removal of key bases, this specific one by 20%. This can be good in certain situations, but there are definitely more powerful skills available to you. After that, we have high spirits. This reduces the heat gauge level required to enter thermal runway, which is what I've been calling red heat up to this point. This specific version lowers it by 30%, and if you've been listening to what I've been saying, high heat equals high damage, so this skill is an incredibly strong one as a result. Then we have speed heat, which makes the heat gauge fill up faster while firing. This specific version of the skill is 13% faster filling. If you combine this skill with the previous one I just mentioned, it should have significantly strong effects overall. Following that is a skill called key base deployment. This increases the number of key bases that you can have deployed at any given time. This version of the skill increases it by two. As well, we have speed charge, which makes the charge gauge itself fill quicker. This version of the skill boosts it by 50%. After that is thread thrift. This reduces the speed at which you use up the charge gauge, both with regular shots and the laser itself. This version specifically reduces it by 11%, which definitely isn't bad at all. And then finally, we have key base fortification, which expands the radius of the key bases to make them larger circles. And that just about covers it, everyone. A complete guide to the hand cannon as a weapon, with the whole moveset covered, the ideal playstyle that you should strive to achieve, and a bit of an exploration into the unique skills that the weapon has available to it. I hope you've enjoyed this look into one of the later unlocked weapons of Wild Hearts, and one of my my favorites. If you want to use this weapon, I hope that you've learned something useful and helpful. Otherwise, I hope you've just enjoyed seeing what this weapon is properly capable of. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye